I'm on the last legs of this mammoth beetle painting. I think there's about 35. Oh, I don't know. I haven't even counted them. Anyway, I've got two ladybirds left to do and I thought you might like to see how I'm doing. What I've got is my little set of colours here and I'm going to do an underpainting of yellow. Ladybirds are obviously red, red and black, but by doing an underpainting, it just stops the, the red going pinkish. It keeps it lovely sort of cherry red and gives a really gorgeous glow to it. So I like to do that, that yellow underpainting. I've just done a little outline, pencil outline. I am keeping these two areas clear because they are white markings. And there's usually a little white marking on its sort of nose area. I then need to use my damp brush, shall we call it a thirsty brush. It's clean. We've taken off the moisture and use a damp brush to pull out some highlights. We could an alternative would be to actually pull out a highlight with the paper. That's obviously a little harder to control. Or so, sometimes it's nice to use a short flat brush. If you haven't pulled out the highlights, you can always let it dry and, and pull it out of the dry paint. So I've got a harder highlight on this and a sort of softer one that curves around the, the shell there. And I need to let that dry. Do the same over here. Put those white markings in just to remind me not to go there. If your studio or wherever you're painting is very warm and everything's drying super quick, the other thing you could do is to wet the entire bug and then paint into it so that you don't get any hard lines. Depends how quickly you like to work and how confident you are. I'm having a little bit of fun with this one. My whole painting, all the bugs are sort of in a row as if they're in a natural history display. But this one is wandering off. So the light is coming there, which means that the, the soft highlight is different from the one before. Then I am going to grab some nice cherry red um, and start dropping it in to the shell. And again, it doesn't matter if it goes onto the head, simply because, of course, that's going to be black. And we can cover up anything. And you can just see how that yellow underneath has stopped anything getting too sort of pink rather than say red. I'm going to grab a slightly darker bluier red and just put more around the shadow at the back around its sort of bottom and just start to try and sort of develop nice rounded feel to my little ladybird. I could pull off and have a badly there. <laughs> um, highlight. Sometimes if you've got a lot of water on there you have to keep pulling out highlights until you're happy with the result because the water sort of floods back into that area and I'm just dropping in some more colour there, let that settle down. We'll keep an eye on it. If as it dries it gets lighter, I've always got the option of doing exactly the same process all over again across the top to really deepen the colour. So this ladybird, the yellow is dry, so I haven't got it fuzzing up into the head area, say. That isn't a problem because it's going to be black over the top, so that's really not an issue. I want quite a hard highlight there on this one. I want lots more shadow around this side, so I'm just using a 
bluier red to create shadow. What I quite like to do is have a soft highlight even here because there's so much shine on that shell you get that reflected light as well in the shadow area. You can see the water zooming back into it. So I've just got to keep herding that water until I get the effect that I want. I'm keeping an eye back on here and you can see some of the paint's gone back into my highlight so I can pick it out. Or again, I can always go back once it's dry. But while it's drying, I'm going to grab some black on my brush. See, it's going into the, the edge, but I, I quite like that. I'm just putting in the rough shape of its legs. And it's got sort of like little feet coming off there. Again, I can do that here, that nice and simple. It might actually be nice to have some red in the legs. So up here. I'm, oops, that's a bit clunky. Best thing is not to worry if something ends up a bit clunky because we can always sort it out. Just drop a bit more red into here. Keep building up the roundness of these little bugs. I'm going to use red for the legs over here and then I can always put black on top. Go back to my black and then we've got their lovely little feelers. Now that should be dry enough. So I'm coming back to do the markings. Just being careful, how do their feelers go that sort of go round a little double on the end, don't they? So this is a white marking. And then this comes across round there. A bit of black. I can't do the dots or the line down the shell. I mean, I could, well, I just haven't I put that as a shadow, but it, then it'll need a far sharper line on top. So, again, I'm just going to come round and put the head on this one. A little bit of black. It's got a couple of little, um, don't even, well, whether they're markings or a bit. There, its little antennae, and we're going to come down. Just get some nice angular marks. That little V at the end of the foot and to pull out a little bit of light on the head. So it's not too clunky, so we use that thirsty brush. See this is still wet enough to be able to pull out soft markings there. I'm going to put a little bit of pen over the top of these, just because they're too small. I could do that in watercolour, but pen will be so much quicker. Once we're happy with that as an underlayer, let them dry 
and then we can come back on top so we need to look carefully at where the dots go um, I've got a, a little using that little flat brush if I want because I don't want my dots to be totally circular and perfect because nature is perfectly imperfect so I'm just putting the dots there one two three four five and then we've got a dot down the bottom and a dot down the bottom you can see that the bottom dots go over the highlight so we actually need the dot to kind of go through the highlight rather than just straight over the top and the dots will be darker at the edges when they're in shadow and lighter where they're facing the light so I'm just putting extra as needs be this one same here dot 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 just let that one slightly dry so it stains the paper and then I'm just making it darker away from that highlight so make these ones darker and I'm going to line that one on and just pull a little bit of it off now right with the edge of my brush I'm just putting in the central line of its case haven't done that here let's do All right, our little bugs seem to be dry, so I'm just going to use an ordinary biro. And the reason I've chosen this is that it gives a far more broken line on a watercolour paper than, say, a fine liner. You could use a 0 0.05 or a 0 0.1 fine liner if you want. The size of pen will entirely be dependent on the size of your um ladybirds you're doing if i was doing them a bit bigger i would just use watercolor for this but i i find that um, i can't control the watercolor quite enough for my liking so that i just think a pen gives a finer mark at this point and is more controllable for this sort of tiny little bits of calligraphy that we're going for here and what i'm doing is just refining my marks and putting in a tiny bit of detail now when you look at it you'll think there's masses of detail in here or i'm hoping you will but actually if you look closely you'll realize that there isn't particularly and that's all well and good as far as i'm concerned so i'm working on top of the paint to define little bits and this is why it didn't particularly matter that I did some of the the legs in red because I want a little bit of that red to show through but the black pen will go on top and just sort of connect everything up they've got these little sort of funny feet what I'm also going to do is lift more of that highlight you remember we left it but it obviously has slightly disappeared so I can lift that again and if the markings are in the way I need to lift the markings as well I can actually go back and put in a tiny touch of the yellow in there I'll just dab it away so it is a it's a smidge, not a lot. If you haven't put the right number of markings in, you could put some in with the pen and it makes quite a nice contrast so that you've got different sort of contrasting marks. I love having 
different quality of marks and even in the simplest element of a painting like this so to have some in black paint some in the black ink so it's for the viewer who looks incredibly closely there's something for them to look at for the viewer who just wants an overall impression they're fine as well let's put a little bit of red and just mellow that down And again, you can add in a little bit more colour, but if I were you, I would use a wet brush just to smooth out so you don't get any funny hard edges where you don't want them. Let's carry on. This front leg doesn't need much just because of the way it was painted. Bit of an edge in here. So that's a white marking. Lift out a bit more of that highlight if I can. Might capture a bit of light in a few of these legs to give them a little bit of shine by putting the line just outside the colour portion and I'm deliberately making the line a little bit wiggly a little bit not perfect because these this one particularly is making a bit of a run for it see whether we need a little bit of yellow around any of those white areas just to zhuzh them up a bit just let that dry and we can remove the pencil lines so there are my little Ladybird just rubbed out the pencil lines and checked that I'm happy with what's going on. And what I thought I'd just quickly show you is if you've done a piece like this and the whole thing relies on it being clean and uh, looking like a, a natural history museum, you know, if you, if you have got little marks and little splodges, don't worry. I would use a bit of magic eraser like this, which is a sponge. You just rinse it in clean water, squeeze it out so it's barely damp, and then you can clean up any marks you're not happy with. And just use that technique that I've shown you, basically, to do as many different variations as you fancy.